Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, September 24th edition of the Contributor Experience GitHub Administration Subproject Meeting. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, I'd like to start off by reminding everyone that we uh, abide by the um, Kubernetes and CNCF Code of Conduct. Um, please be excellent to each other. Um, we have a couple items on the agenda today. Um, so we can jump right in. Um, first one up looks like the GitHub kudos beta. Um, what was that you, Bob? Yep. Um, so actually through Gwyn, uh, I got introduced to someone at GitHub uh, and they brought up something that they are sort of prototyping right now and essentially being able to give kudos to people um, you know, you can sort of, I, I linked the, the little preview link uh, in the doc. Let me pull that up myself. Um, so the, the, the text or command can literally be, you know, whatever you want, we can configure it. Um, and then, you know, you can sort of at, at the person and give them, you know, a nice little message, sort of like a shout out. And that will actually uh, appear on their profile. Um, so you will get sort of like a, a stream of things there just as a, a way of recognizing people. Uh, any sort of thoughts or opinions on uh, potentially trying the beta? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm very supportive of this. Um, yeah, it looks like there's like limits so that it can't be abused. Um, I don't, I don't see any security impl uh, implications. I, yeah. Yeah, uh, I didn't see any like I, uh, immediate I'm like, you know, yeah. Having having another way to like collect these is good. Can we like th something that isn't shown in the preview? Is there a way for like somebody, whether it's like a repo maintainer or an org maintainer or something like that, to be able to like collect these and 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 see like from one at the repo level or the org level the kudos actions that are being taken? Because um, I could also see. Not not necessarily that they're being abused, but for the purpose of like collecting them and, and putting them in our other shout outs channels. Yeah, so, uh, they did not bring that up, or at least they didn't mention it in the previous communications uh, I've had with them. Um, but uh, I can certainly, you know, ask them about it. So it looks like screen eight is an aggregate of the uh, of the repo uh, kudos. So potentially that logs as an event. Nowhere. Maybe yeah. Like it looks like if I. So eight looks like from seven. So like looking at a user level, seven shows that, okay, that user had 24 kudos in that repo. Yeah, okay, it looks like it is, uh, yeah, per at least repo basis. Um, right. Can, can inquire about, uh, again, like seeing if that's done at the org level. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that that'd be cool just for for understanding and also just understanding uptake. Like, hey, if we enable this feature, is this something that people like to use um, as a um, as a method of kudos and to just link it in with our other channels? Because we've also got yeah the shoutouts channel. We do tweets about things, we talk about the community meeting. Um, and if we're going to like, 
yeah, give people kudos or whatever. Like, I, I, it would be cool if we could just link all those channels together to understand like who's getting, yep, recognized for their their work. I'm actually a, li a little curious, like if how it presents itself on like a person's profile, or if it does, like, and and how much it does. Um, mm -hmm. Just to sort of. Well, see that there. I'm thinking of like linking back to other details. Okay. But yeah, I don't think there's any reason why we wouldn't explore this. Okay. Uh, Ehor and I have a meeting with GitHub next Wednesday. Um, I'll follow up uh, an email with them and then bring it up in the, the meeting next Wednesday. Sounds great. Uh, any other comments on this one before we move on? Okay. Uh, next one, Stephen. Hello, hello. Yeah, so uh, we had been talking about it for a bit, both in naming and kind of uh, on and off in this uh, meeting. So I finally remembered to open <laughs> a tracking issue for changing the default branches to uh, name uh, to main. Um, so just really, that's just long-term tracking issue links out the GitHub, uh, GitHub renaming uh, repo. Um, so it looks like starting on October 1st, newly created uh, repositories will default to, to main as the branch, uh, as the default branch name. And, um, and I think we have a consensus that we do not want people to move forward until we have a more seamless integration, right, for them. Um, so things to still work out. The last naming uh, working group uh, meeting, we discussed some of this, and uh, Jordan and I are going to put together a list of things to consider when you're naming your branch when that time finally comes. Um, so the one question that I have is just kind of an, an open question, and maybe this is just I, I don't I don't know the answer to this uh, would be the default branch name for new repos changing to main which we can there's a button that we can turn that on yeah. at any time now like that button already exists it's gonna it's gonna automatically click in a week from now but we can click that button any time um, but that button and and have it look is do we know of there being any issues with us making that move right now like with our automation systems i don't know of any that so, would be concerned basically from our perspective saying like hey we want to delay that particular action off from october 1st to a later date so my understanding is it only is in effect for net new repositories. Right? Yeah. So this wouldn't be anything donated yeah. or, or anything. That and is... and it, all, all our repos are created off the template that we have. Uh, so those should remain on master till we actually flip that one over. So do have, we... So this, this won't really have an impact on us until we decide to flip our template. Correct. Got At it. least as far as I know, I, I believe that is the case. So do we want to make a plan to flip the template on October 1st or around October 1st? I don't think we need to be bound by an arbitrary date one way or another. Like we could do it sooner or we could do it later. I don't think it matters to us whether we flip along with the rest of GitHub. Because um, I don't... I don't have any objection doing that sooner if we know that it's not going to break anything, or at least if we don't have any clear indications that it's going to break anything. So, yeah. so I, I think that, I think that we're talking sooner or later, but like, we're going to blink and October 1st will be here. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I would say 
I would say given what's in the issue and given what's in renaming just for the sake of uh, less confusion, um, we should try to do it around the same time uh, for the template project as well. Um, especially given if the template project is only in effect for new repositories anyway, then it shouldn't affect anything that currently exists. I'm okay with this, um, with the, the asterisk of if we start noticing things that we don't know and aren't prepared for as far as flipping the, the, the default branch, that we can revisit this decision. And basically, okay, we don't, like our automation is not yet set up for something that is not master. So let's, let's unbreak it for now and then figure out what we need to do to fix yeah. our automation stuff to cut it back over. Cool. Any other thoughts, opinions? Um, the only like other big thing that we'll we should probably update is honestly our like documentation. We're essentially going to have to main like have it's like if you're you're doing this, it could be master or main. Yeah. Well, so that will the docs I guess will only really apply to existing repos because each repo has will have their own slightly 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 different contributing process. I don't think there's anything in Prowl that specifically like deals with branching names because we do merging into release branches all the time. Yeah. Um, ooh, actually. Blobmaster. <laughs> I'm wondering if our, like, just our default tie query is looking for master, like the, the big query that just does everything. Hmm. Uh, so let's, I don't think we need to solve it here. Let's just yeah. take that as an action and say, we want to look at tied, we want to look at places that might be referencing like blob master. Um, there's some things that will default switch over, um, but in general, we want to make sure that any uh, automation applying to new repositories that potentially have the new default branch name that we want to, we want to poke at. I think we're good actually. I don't see any references to master in here other than, um, the website repo, but we're not we're not messing around with that right now. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, let's let's do it. I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> um, looks like you got the next one as well, Sam. Yeah, so uh, I guess question for the crew. Um, so for people who are, because um, I think I had mentioned this to you, Christoph, a while back. Um, so for people who are stepping down from GitHub, admin, uh, GitHub administration or more specifically like new membership coordinator duties, right? Um, I had requested that my privileges remain in place for config um, reviewer approver. Um, I think we should talk about how that works um, because people who are people who step up as NMCs get the privileges for the sake of uh, adding adding new members right but I think that people who were previously MMCs still have the skill and wherewithal to approve for config across the repo so yeah we did talk about that Stephen um, and like we, we, t we talked about that and it was with the caveat that like, okay, I need to go and talk with everyone else and do what everyone else thinks or the, the, the owners are concerned. Um, when we talked about it as a group, uh, uh, the conclusion that we came to was the specific rights to merge things into here because like adding new members is a like it's a privileged operation, um, that it's like whoever's wearing the hat right now. And if you're no longer wearing the hat of doing that, 
than the approved rights to those things in the repo aren't necessary. Um, the thing that we maybe should have done um, was there's like emeritus lines in those owner files. Like I don't mind recognizing that like these are people who've done the job before and know what they're talking about as far as like, you know, technical pieces, but it's, you know, when you're, when you're wearing the hat, here's the privileges. When you're no longer wearing the hat, you don't really need the privileges anymore. Is is kind of the, the, the thought process that went in there. Um, open to other like thoughts and discussions, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the line of thinking that we, we came to and the conclusion that we came to at that, at that point. So I would say that I would be curious because I think we also talked about this at some point that I would eventually, and I believe others would have um, eventual interest in like understanding and moving towards the path of like, what does it look like to be in Kubernetes owners? Um, and the right now for me, the path is not clear. Um, NMC seemed like a way to slowly attain more trust across the org. Um, and I think there needs to be, there's, so there's a segmentation of like, okay, people who are creating PRs for new members, right? Versus people who have the understanding to add people to GitHub teams, right? And I think that there's some overlap there, but they're potentially separate uh, bands of, of reviewer approvership. Well, adding to GitHub Teams, the definite hope there would be that we'd be delegating that to six. To six, for sure. For sure. As like, so that, so that, that those, those rights and privileges will then go to the SIGs. For things, for teams that have not yet migrated out of the master org.yaml, uh, I can speak for myself. Uh, I'm open to PRs that move things out of org.yaml and delegate them out to the proper SIG. Um, so that that control can be in the, the, the SIG's hands. Um, but as far as um, like having approved rights over, like if for, 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 M, for the NMC job, um, if we had the like technical ability right now, which we don't to just say the only action that you can take is, is the membership file and not manage teams, that'd be even better because yeah. ultimately the team is, again, we like to delegate out to the things and nobody else. So that's, that's the second question that you had there. Or the second part is like the managing groups and managing teams. Um, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be really anybody in the GitHub management where we want to try and delegate that out to SIGs as much as possible. And then like the SIG, you're responsible for your teams. We'll just, from the org owner level, we'll connect permissions where we need to, to be like, okay, repo admin, you actually get the admin permission and then you're done. Um, because we haven't turned on those bits. Although we could at some point look at turning on some of those bits because Parabolus has some of those and it's doing it in other, like other instances where we run Parabolus. Um, it, there's probably some like API things that we need to clean up there. If I understand it correctly, the last time I talked to um, uh, my, my, with my, my red hat on, red hat's running Parabolos. <laughs> yeah. Red hat's running Parabolos and they're doing a bunch of repo permission stuff that we don't have turned on. Um, but it's been a little while since I talked to Steve about that um, and, and what, what we're doing in Red Hat's configuration versus upstreams. So there are some other things that we could do as far as like even c connecting and getting more stuff out of um, the control of, of they, they basically get have owner's team. It's question number two. My thoughts on question number one is you have identified a gap. There is no clear path right now as far as like org ownership and who should be an org owner or what they, the path is to do that. The, the, the historical precedent I can definitely like shed some light on. So the historical precedent is uh, there was no clear policy. Um, I came in when I was a technical lead at Contribex and was like, hey, there's no clear policy. How does somebody get that? 
and they were like, okay, write a policy. So I did. And then I became an order runner because I wrote a policy. <laughs> um, many years ago when this was the wild west of, <laughs> of uh, open source software, um, there wasn't anything, wrote a policy. That's how it happened. The policy is basically like what the procedure is for getting people to be org owners, but we have no policy as far as like, you know, terms or really how many org owners we've, there needs to be like the consensus of the current owners to propose somebody new and anybody that does get proposed needs to get a sign off from steering. There's, there's that step in there that like, that's one thing that steering will explicitly sign off on is saying like, yes, this person is trustworthy to give them the keys to the castle, um, as it were. But yes, other than that procedure, um, there really isn't a ladder or a path because it's one of those like super crazy, highly privileged permissions. There isn't necessarily a, hey, we, like we, we don't necessarily want there to be like a clear ladder of like, you know, okay, maybe we have like 30 or donors because everybody's just done the ladder and has gone, gone, gone through the steps and, and gone up and through it. So it is ambiguous. I agree. Is it, is that a good thing? No. <laughs> um, I definitely like, yeah, we did have a conversation about your, your interest there, Stephen. I did pass it on and when, I don't know when we'll be talking next about org ownership, like when somebody wants to step down, what the, you know, who we nominate, how we choose a new person, if there's more than one person that's interested, like all of that is, is unfortunately ambiguous at this point, just because we haven't really dealt with it. I think like, yeah, I believe we've cycled out one owner since this, permission thing happened um, and yeah so it's, it's like it's it's new ground I, I, I unfortunately I don't have anything more like clear than that yeah I, I would say all that I, I say all of that to say like I'm interested like you know as like as people are available to spread the load I know that we are all um, generally bandwidth constrained people. So more is better to a reasonable amount, but it also, um, in addition to the ambiguity, it's, it's um, the ability to like, the ability to actually be functional in GitHub uh, management or administration. Um, there are certain things that people who would come to this meeting, I know it's a small meeting too, but um, there, there are certain things that people who come to this meeting would just not be able to do, even if they could be part of the discussion. So. And, and the thing is, I, I completely agree with everything you said. This meeting is more to shed light on what used to be a very like cloak and dagger-y kind of thing because, because it was highly privileged and there wasn't a lot of like Sean on our discussion and our processes, which isn't really the open source way if it doesn't need to be. So like that's the point of this meeting is, necessary, is to shine some light at least onto the thinking. And I don't mind like talking about my, my thought process in an open, honest, recorded way. Um, but yeah, like at this point, it's, it's kind of like shrug. There really isn't a clear answer and stuff, but like, um, you know, it is, it is a topic of discussion that is coming up basically every, in every place of the project is succession planning. And what does succession planning work look, look like in different areas of the project? How do we create, you know, continuity in the project as people, as jobs change as people's priorities change, like either work priorities or life priorities and all that kind of stuff. Um, as this is a, you know, anything we're doing around managing our, our orgs and stuff, as it is such a critical role, it's definitely a critical discussion for us to be having. So like, thank you for bringing it up. We're going to need to keep talking about this and we're going to need to kind of figure that out because, you know, we might be bandwidth constrained now, but we might be even more bandwidth constrained in the future, or people may just get burned out and want to life cycle out of the project. And as they do, we need to kind of have a way to, to do that appropriately. So um, we are at time. Is there any last comments before we wrap up for today? 
I'm good on my side. I'm good. Cool. Well, th th thank you to <laughs> the two of you and Eeyore who came to hang out for today. <laughs> um, the, we, we are scheduled to have a meeting next month. If there's anything in the meantime, or for anybody who's watching this recording, uh, you can please reach out in the GitHub management channel on the Kubernetes Slack, or uh, if you need to talk to us privately, uh, GitHub at Kubernetes.io, uh, or public discussions can go to the ContribX mailing list. Thank you, everyone. Take it easy.